wasn't good enough. He wasn't afraid. Uh, AC Law just mentally couldn't get it done. I mean, that's you can't do anything about that. You talk about uh, Gravis Vasquez. Gravis Vasquez just wasn't playing. Right. I mean, that's what you have to do. You can't worry about the coach yelling at you. You can't worry about making a mistake. You can't worry about coming out of the game. You just go play, and when you or doing something the coach doesn't like, he tells you, and then you try to adjust. If you can't adjust, then it's an issue, but that's all you can do. How hard is it for these guys? Do you well, you have to understand why it's hard for them to figure it out. When you've been a star you're, from the time you were 11 or 12 years old and everybody's kissing your ass and telling you how great you're going to be and that you're going to be a lottery pick, and then you are a lottery pick, and then you go to a team, you expect the same things. Then you get to that team and it's pretty good, and you sit on the end of the bench, you get a rude awakening. You know, and then you, if you're smart enough to reevaluate and recreate yourself, then you turn it around and you have success. The ones that haven't been able to do that, they're out of the league. It's as simple as that. I mean, you know, you have these expectations of yourself. And it's hard for you to swallow your ego and your pride and say, this is my niche. This is who I am, but I could have a pretty good life in this niche. And you keep fighting it and fighting it. Before you know it, you'll be out of the league. Sam Young. I mean, I love Sam Young as a person, but that was one of the issues that, you know, I can score, I can score. Sam, this is what we want you to do. He wanted to get traded, he gets traded, he goes to Philly, he never plays, and then they don't even think about him after he, the season's over. And now he's in Indiana trying to get a shot there. It's just like... And you try to explain to him, like, listen, here's a niche for you, man. Right? I do, I do all of that. That's, you know, part of coaching is trying But they don't want to hear it. I just said why they don't want to hear it. They don't want to hear it because they're egos in a way. You got 10 boys behind you telling you the coach is screwing you. You know, if you had a different coach, if they give you this, if they give you that, you would be. So what do you, you know, and then you got your family telling you the same thing. You got your agent telling you the same thing. Everybody you grew up with at home telling you the same thing. So why, is, why are you going to believe a coach who you don't even trust and don't know? Realistically. <laughs> Really matter, right? I'm not saying the coach doesn't know, matter. But my my but point is, in most of these guys' life, when they've shown talent, the coaches become their friend. That's true. But it, like, all right, so last. Yeah, I agree with that. I'm saying coaches can, different coaches can turn on the light bulb for people by their relationship that they have with a player. I'm just talking about right. the general mindset right. as a kid comes up through the ranks. I've been in AAU games. I coached AAU. I watched my son play so, AAU, two yeah, of them. My daughter play. And the same thing, most of the coaches have no effect. They're not taking guys out of the game for not getting back on defense. They're not taking a guy out for letting a guy blow by. They're not taking a guy out for not passing the ball to an open teammate. So they're coming up to the ranks where the coach has no impact on them playing and not playing because their talent is so overwhelming. Then they get to a level where it becomes everybody's uh, equal ground. You know, you're not the, the fastest guy or the highest jumping guy. There's a lot of guys like you. Now, where are you going to go? What's going to get you over the hump? The fundamentals. And if they don't believe it, they certainly find out about it sooner than later. I guess the idea. Is that more prevalent now? I mean, obviously now, but was it happening back then when you were coming up through the ranks? No. Did you have these kids with that attitude? You didn't. No, because there was no, there was no, the AAU, there there was no taking a kid and putting him on a pedestal at 10 years old, 11 years old. Right. Somebody was just telling me about their nephew that, you know, scores eight goals a game in soccer and all, you know, it, you know he, I think he's even younger. And all the kids are milling around the ball, but he knows how to play. But it doesn't help him if you just let him score all the goals and don't teach the other kids how to play. I'll play with teammates. Because eventually he's going to get to play against kids that are on his level. Right. And, you know, I, I mentored a kid, Brandon, who was at St. George's that signed with Alabama. And I told him, I said, you have to push yourself to a level where – you're playing against the best of the best. Those kids you're playing in that D2 league, you're running over them and throwing them in the ground and burying them. Don't get excited about that because when you get to Alabama, you won't be burying anybody in the ground. There'll be techniques that you need to learn and there'll be guys that are quicker than you that'll be giving you stress. And that's what's important when you're trying to uh, you know, bring up a young player. And you know, when, you know, as soon as I started playing well. I mean, I was a baseball player. My baseball coach was all over me. If I missed a sign, he was cursing me out more than he was cursing somebody else who didn't have talent. You know, just because you can hit doesn't mean that you can't bunt. You know, and it's the same way in basketball. You, you have to learn to play with everybody else and do the right thing. If you don't teach them that, then they keep coming up the way thinking that it's all about them. Does it shock you when you get one that's old school like that?